Sometimes before dawn, on summer night, I'm woken by the call of the quail. Its distinctive three-note call carries over the fields. But you'll almost never see it, even if you can hear it right next to you. It's a master ventriloquist and concealer, sounding like it's everywhere, but appearing nowhere. It's a tiny, unpredictable bird, the smallest of the pheasant family, roughly starling size. It's also the only migrant arriving in April from its wintering ground in Africa and India, and you never know when or where it will turn up. It's a relative of, of the much more common and easily seen red-legged partridge that's wandering about the empty grounds of Taraloka, across the car park, or outside the Tara cabin. And also its even larger cousin, the pheasant, that I'm feeding outside my bedroom. The Buddha was obviously familiar with quails in India two and a half thousand years ago. They may even have been the same species. They're mentioned a number of times in the Pali Canon. In the middle length sayings, he teaches how to work in meditation. Reflecting on his own experience, he notes that if your effort is too lax, then any meditative absorption disappears in the same way a quail would fly out of your hands if you held it too, too loosely. This conjures up the image of our concentration as being like a living thing. Hold it too tightly and we crush it. Too loose and it escapes us. We can perhaps imagine the sensitivity of our hands, even of our whole being, as we hold a fragile living thing with great care. So perhaps the effort that we need to make must be like that, one with great care and sensitivity, combined with steadiness and constancy. Not too tight and not too loose. Then the wildness of our meditation and practice can stay not just alive, but vividly so.